are listening to WHOA Podcast, coming to you from Gainesville, Florida. Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of the WHOA GNB Podcast. I am super excited, and now I'm getting even more caffeinated, <laughs> because we have the Opus crew in the house. We have today the brothers, the owners, the co-founders of Opus Coffee, Tim and Brett Larson. Guys, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) These guys, for everybody that's listening, I'm going to show the camera, but they brought the cold brew in the house, which is like the only way <laughs> to start an 8 a.m. podcast. <laughs> and uh, it's it's delicious, and they brought us a whole, just a whole bunch of goodies. I love the fact, you know, goodies are allowed. I know we're not monetizing the podcast, or at least not yet, <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to send me shirts and stuff, like I could use clothing. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, so feel free to like, they brought me a, a t-shirt, they brought a tie t-shirt, they brought us some swag, This this bottle, I told them, I was like, if we don't talk about this right away, I will forget. <laughs> I will forget to talk about it. But they have this really, really cool water bottle. If you're listening to the podcast, go watch the video because it's awesome. And it just has all of these Gainesville landmarks on it. And I don't know where I first saw this. I think it was, it was probably on your Instagram account. I think probably. so. Probably. Yes, for sure. But it's just, it's just awesome. Ty, you saw that? That's pretty yeah. sick, right? Yeah. So, oh, that, is, who that's the one it? thing you're not supposed to do on the podcast. <laughs> well, is like who, uh, the who designed that, if you don't mind me asking? We have a, um, an employee designed it, actually. It wasn't yeah. Mike, right? It was, um, he couldn't do that. So, no. I'm, <laughs> just, I'm, I'm no. just joking. I'm joking, Mike. All right. <laughs> well, cool. Ty, I well, saw him yesterday. I told him I was going to blast okay. him a little bit. <laughs> okay. Good. Yeah, 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 great. That's what's so great about <laughs> this yeah. podcast is that you can blast people and exactly. everybody knows who it is. <laughs> <laughs> Ty, what's happening in your world, my man? Any you news? Know, all all sorts of stuff. Yeah, getting ready for getting ready for school. I saw you had the hello student sign up there. Yep. Um, yeah, I'm going to be gone for a few weeks before school, so a lot of a lot of things happening here late. But uh, when you're talking about the gifts for the podcast, maybe we should maybe we should start a registry. Get, <laughs> get, <laughs> yeah, get, hey. get, get on the podcast a little quicker. <sighs> what do we want? What do we need? Um, I always need clothes, man. <laughs> but no, it's it's. Uh, it's 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 awesome. Like I, I'm super appreciative. Like the the amount of like just the number of people who have reached out about the podcast has been extremely inspiring to me. Because you know, especially early on, I, that's the thing when it comes to, to social media and and just a lot of things is that you have to be consistent and you have to. Um, like you can't give up after two months. You know, a lot of I can't tell you. And this happens to me all the time when I'm doing social media talks and stuff. Like, or or just talking to business owners. They're like, oh yeah, like I know it's super important for me to have Instagram, or it's super important for me to have YouTube or Facebook. And then, and then they will try it for two months, three months, and because they don't see any results, they're like, yeah. they're like, oh. So it's a, it, it's. I mean, it's obviously more gratifying for us because we've had good results and we've had good feedback. So that like pumps you up more. Just be like, go, 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 go. But um, but yeah, you just got to keep keep plugging and just. Uh, I've had people reach out on Instagram on LinkedIn, on Facebook, and um, and now, do we have a website up now? Is it? So, whoagnv.com. <laughs> We're still like working out a couple little little kinks and things, but yes, yeah, so you can go check out the website, whoagnv.com. There's actually a nominate a guest link on there. Cool. So you can go and click that link, and if there's somebody that you think should be highlighted, shown, like have a, have a great discussion with on the podcast, go on there and nominate them, and um, and we'll get them on. It's not loading right now, now, now that I say that. <laughs> I told her yesterday that it was being super, super slow. I think it's because we actually put some of the video on there okay. because the video is so big. It's all, know, the like, the traffic, yeah. <laughs> it's all the traffic. It's all the traffic. It's all the The website's already crashed. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's going to happen. Well, um, guys, thank you so much for being yeah. here. Yeah. Thank you for having us. My pleasure. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, it's, it's interesting. So these guys have been in my network for a very long time. 
because my wife Shannon <laughs> used to work for them back in school, oh, very cool. and uh, like <laughs> best employee ever, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah she was incredible. Yeah, yes. so, yes, that's for that's sure. what she she was like. She was like, I know that they're gonna say I was the best ever, <laughs> but like she, this is this is my podcast, so you can tell me the truth. She, she actually she, she, besides uh, she's the only employee in the Opus Hall of Fame. So uh, yeah, throw that yes, out there. first inductee, only inductee. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I know that she she used to love it. So was that? the first location that she worked at? The one that was in the Shands Atrium? Or? That was actually our second. Um, the first one was actually a really small uh, community hospital. Um, and then six months later, we started the one in the atrium. Okay. And so, yeah, she worked at that one. But the first one basically had like one or two employees. Okay, so cool. It was... Well, Shannon told me to tell you hello. She was super excited. <laughs> yeah, and I was yeah. like, I'm going to have the office guys on the podcast. She was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so she was, she was bumped. Um, and I know that, she, I mean, she was, she's always loved these guys and, and keeps up with them even to, even to today. Um, but God, that was like 12 years ago. I know, man. So, Can you believe yeah, I know. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, just, crazy. it goes by so fast. I can't believe that I've been here that long. So um, like before we get too deep into this, like, like give us your story. Like, I definitely want to talk about, you know, your locations and, and, and some of the growth that you guys have had, because it's just been incredible to, to watch from the outside in. And, um, but yeah, tell us that origin story. Like what even led to this coffee company even, even becoming a thing? Yes. <laughs> so this was back, um, like 1998, 1999. We both worked at a coffee shop in South Miami Hospital. And so that was basically our part-time job after high school. Uh, we were in college, so we worked there part-time, just like a lot of our employees do. And the, own, it was, um, the owner of the bar, uh, he got another job. So he basically left it to Brett and I, we were running it. And after we did that for a couple years, we looked at each other one day and thought, we can do this ourselves. And so we started doing the research, um, and we knew we wanted. To, we knew like the hospital like model worked. Like you know, we opened a coffee shop in another facility. We knew the like the it, it wasn't as capital intensive and it was lower risk than opening on the outside. So that's what we were going to do starting out. So I went on the internet, dial up internet, yeah. and <laughs> yeah, AOL. Uh, that's yeah, AOL. <laughs> and um, but the, yeah, yeah. And went to the store, got the CD, and. I know. Downloaded got, it. Got, um, some, got, a, exactly. got a bunch of free hours. <laughs> I, I, they probably don't even remember that. Anyway, okay. um, okay. this, this yeah, 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 exactly. Right. Yeah. This came in the mail. <laughs> right. From Netscape. Um, <laughs> anyway, okay. So um, we, research, we, we downloaded a list. Well, we, anyway, we found um, a list of all the hospitals in Florida. And I called every single one and asked how many beds they had. Because we were looking to propose, you know, the largest hospital as possible. And then I... I mean, I, I made that note. We took the top 50, called them all back, at just the, the front desk, information desk, and I said, if I wanted to start a coffee shop in this hospital, who would I speak to? And that was it. And I wrote all that information down. Then I called that person and tried to make appointments, but it came very clear that no one was interested. <laughs> so we got it. So we made like 25 proposal books and we just got in the car and we decided to show up in their offices. Yeah. So we drove um, like Naples, Tampa, Tallahassee, Jacksonville, down to Gainesville, Mel Melbourne, Orlando, Melbourne, Cocoa Beach, back down Broward County. Um, so this was two years after you had worked at the other place. So are we like 2000? 2000. Okay. Yeah. 2000. So I was yeah. 20. Uh, Tim was 22 at the time. Yeah. Um, no, no. So this was uh, 19 oh, and 21. Yeah. 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 And um, and it's just so so there were there were a couple people that were then interested that we like after sitting in their office. Some people were like, "Thanks for driving, but no thank you." Yeah. And it's like a 19 year old and a 21 year old showed up yeah. in your office, like, "Hey, I want to start a coffee shop." And so, yeah. The response it's might a, be different little, today yeah, than it yeah, was yeah, in yeah, yeah. that time. Yeah. <laughs> um, you guys, I mean, you can set up a coffee shop right here, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, be in New Skitters for less. <laughs> Do you need a proposal book? So. <laughs> and um, so we, uh, anyway, just so, there were some that were interested, but it just so happens that there was uh, the, the current director of food nutrition at Shands at the time. Anytime was, you tap the table, it'll be recorded. Oh, sorry. Okay, okay, I'll stop. I'll stop. I will. Um, I'll stop doing that. So it just so happens that they were interested in um, opening a coffee shop the, the the exact time that we dropped off the proposal. Ooh. So it was perfect timing too. Time um, everything. So we uh, we packed everything up in Miami, put it in a U-Haul, and we opened up five months later. So yeah. 
And that was in the AGH hospital, okay. which just no longer exists. They, um, and then Shands, I guess they really liked us. They saw what we were doing. They saw the passion, the quality of the coffee. And so then they, uh, they invited us to open a ch at the main Chance Hospital. Um, and from there it was, as they were opening new buildings, they asked us to open more coffee shops. So were both so was, hospitals going at one time, you said? Yeah, So yeah. Th those are the first two. Yeah. Correct. That was eight, uh, yeah. then that one came second. Yeah. Um, which was Shan's atrium. Yeah, Correct, right? yeah. So, and now you're at up to how many? We have five inside of uh, UF Health buildings. Okay. Um, and then one off of an office uh, building off Tower Road. So we've kind of expanded yeah. a little bit outside of uh, uh, UF Health buildings into office buildings. Okay, like, so. well, walk me through that process a little bit. Because <laughs> I, like, I'm always interested, you know, when businesses start, start to expand. Because I know, like, for us, for example, you know, having new scooters for less, for anybody who's listening that doesn't remember, remember that I own that. <laughs> um, you know, you, so we always got that pressure, like, oh, when are you gonna open a location in this college town? And when are you gonna open a location in this college town? And when are you gonna do this? And like, I always got that pressure. And and the truth was, we never made the call to do it because our sales in this one location kept going up. We would go from 400 scooters yeah. to 500 scooters to 600 scooters to 700 scooters to 800 scooters. And now, now we've done, you know, we've done just a little over 800 scooters in 2016, a little over 800 at 2017. So now it's like kind of leveling off. And now I'm like, okay, like, does, does that mean we expand or does that mean like, what, what do you do at that point to bring in more revenue? Now, like I know you got like the cold brew thing going on, like is it expansion of products? Cause that's kind of like what we're doing. We've, you know, we've now brought in, th look, there's only a couple things we can do, right? Either start a new location in a completely different town we can take out competition. <laughs> oh, I like take, that. Take over, yeah. take, take yeah. over their market share, which is always a great thing to do. Um, or if expand I could products. Yeah, please. Yeah, sell golf carts, maybe. Yeah, so. Like, I'm, yeah. Joking. I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. We did, and that failed miserably. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding, I'm No, kidding. I mean, yeah. like, so the, the golf, I mean, for us, for the golf cart thing, like, we did that for a very, <laughs> for a very, very short period of time, and uh, the biggest issue is the space. Like, yeah, they're so, you know, they're so big. Now we're doing, like, the e bike which I think has traction because it's a, one it's I, I see some students using them but mainly like a completely different demographic mm -hmm. it's like an older demographic that wants to like get some exercise True. and actually we should it probably help if we put one right next to Opus in the hospital and get like <laughs> 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 but like it has the little has the little push throttle you know but that's a, it's a different demographic so for us a company that's always been selling to students 95% students to be able to sell to a, a different demographic that's a way we can grow sales yeah, right sure. so so that's that's why I'm asked I'm really interested in in that like, is it, when do you make the decision, okay, it's time to open another location or, or expand into a new product, for example? Yeah, well, I think it's, it's always challenging trying to ma maintain the freshness of the company and trying to come up with new things to try to keep up with the industry and try to, uh, I mean, nobody really wants to go to a restaurant that serves the same food over and over and over again. P people want something new. And so that's one of the reasons why we wanted to jump in the cold brew business and do some bottling and do some uh, creative stuff that way, just because um, give people more more options and and just just keep it new. Yeah. So, um, but that's and then for the expansion. Yeah. So with more locations, where um, I mean, it was I don't want to say it was given to us because we were like we were actively trying to be an awesome coffee company. Um, you know, like being in Shands though, being in a hospital, um, like a, maybe not a lot of the community, you know, you don't get a lot of like the, the glory or the notoriety in the community operating, or it may, I don't want to even say respect because we weren't looking for respect, but um, but like like we're a coffee shop in a hospital. Right. And so that, that brings its own, um, like I don't wanna say classification, but people think of it differently as opposed to a coffee shop on the outside. But anyway, we were doing an, um, an awesome job in Shands that, that they just kept giving us locations or offering us locations. And so that's, that was the expansion in the first part and that was the easy expansion. Um, so it's more of like the opportunity is presenting itself and it's either seize it or don't seize it? Um, I, I would, at, at this point, there were a couple things. So we we wanted to. Um, I don't know if you want to go down this direction. So I don't know where it's going. So um, 
like right now we're a lot more cautious with opening locations. There okay. was a point in like 2009 we thought we were invincible because we thought we were amazing because we were <laughs> we were successful in chance, you know. Um, but so we opened up a coffee shop actually um, on University Avenue. Uh, it was like 2009, and we quickly uh, realized that it was um, it, it was not we were way in over our heads. It was the sales were not there. Um, hmm. Maybe it wasn't our divine like touch that made things successful. Um, we just weren't getting the traffic. There were now we were open to a lot more competition, and we were just irresponsible. We thought with our cash flow and. Um, so we ended up, we, like, I knew from day one this was not going to work out. We signed a five-year lease. After oh, six no. weeks, we closed, and I bought the lease out. Yeah. And so... Um, it was rough. I didn't want to ride that train for five years knowing that it wasn't the direction that we wanted to go. So... I mean, I don't like, know. you guys really... I, um, I know it's, like, not yeah. fun to, like, necessarily talk about those things, but I think it brings so much... Like, that, to me, like, brings so much value to an entrepreneurial, you know, audience that's listening. Because, I mean, we have so many people, I mean, you could have... You wouldn't have known unless you done it, right? Like, you probably could have done... Like, what, what lessons were learned? I mean, you could have done more research or what? Well, I, I don't know if we could have... Well, because everyone was, like, pushing, hey, you need to open an outside location. So yeah. we thought that was the way to go. And maybe eventually that was the way to go, but it was the wrong spot. Um, we thought just because we were on University Avenue, it was going to be busy. Uh, there were some other factors that were... That probably played into it, which we just overlooked. Um, but now, I mean, the lessons learned, like, like, like I said, we, like, we're a lot more cautious yeah. with Link for Locations. Like, just because Shans is successful and like everything we've done is successful so far, doesn't mean our future endeavor is gonna be successful. Um, and so, I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I yeah. think it's a really <laughs> awesome niche. Yeah. I mean, you've really carved out like that that niche, in my, in my opinion, like you're like that that place. I mean, has there been competition within a hospital? So there's uh there, there's so there's imaginary lines in the hospital. So, <laughs> um, like w within the building, I you mean, they're crazy. not imaginary to, uh, to 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 um yeah to the you know the business. But like, so there's a Starbucks up the hallway, and that's technically like UF property. Um, and so there is a Starbucks like a minute away walking distance, but we do fine. Um, you know, we do fine. We still market. We work. We you crush we, their faces. We you, crush their faces, are, man. Yeah, you are exactly. Like taking Starbucks and like taking their face and like smashing it. <laughs> no, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then and I mean it also helps. I mean we're basically two local guys. We're we're the fa we're face behind the business, and so pe people see this, people recognize this, um, and stuff like that. And we're there quite often. So I mean, you look at Starbucks, you're like, oh. Who's the owner of Starbucks? Why he's who's never there? And so opposed to us, where we try to spend a lot of time there and uh, and try to. Um, I mean, people meet, love meet Starbucks, so it's not, yeah. it's not like. Um, but I mean, we know uh, you know like we're there every day as yeah. much as we can. Um, and we bring the more local aspect to. Yeah, and and I mean, uh, for um, there's certain things that they do well, but I mean, you know, for the most part, like we lo we, we roast our coffee locally. It's fresher. Um, that's so cool. So, so yeah. like I've I've been in that facility and, and watched the coffee being roasted and I mean everybody knows the difference between like coffee that was just roasted. I mean it is so so good. And like and I don't know if you do this for everybody or you just do this for me. I mean you guys sell <laughs> sell, sell the bags of coffee. Yeah. Like online like for businesses? Do you guys, is that in terms of your biz cuz I know like the locations are like that's, that's the your bread business. and butter. That's the yeah, bread and butter, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah. And then, and then you have like these products. Like these products are available online. Like, I know we we get oh, so. Let me stop. Let me try to like decaffeinate <laughs> a little bit because I'm getting like Don't super, do that. super excited. <laughs> um, we get coffee from you guys here for the dealership, and you bring it in like a big five pound bag, right? And and we like we have a little grinder in our little break room so we get it whole bean and we yeah. grind it and then we make it here every single day i mean is that something that people even know about or is this just something you do special for me <laughs> so <laughs> just for you just for you call call. Call. <laughs> yeah um so 90 percent of our business is basically the, the coffee the shops coffee okay. uh 10 yeah, yeah. cents wholesale um we like partnering up with with a lot of really cool businesses and it's what we're pretty fortunate to do, like we're able to kind of pick and choose who we want to deal with and uh, and sell our coffee to. And we want to choose people that 
we know would respect the product mm. and not just like grind it months in advance and then just let it sit there and then um so we've uh yeah we do a decent yeah yeah so you, you we have a wholesale ordering um off our website or if we have about 15 20 wholesale clients right now yep. um with, with whether it's cold brews or the keg nitro cold brew or just wholesale coffee bags. Um, yeah. And so, <laughs> I need a, you need a keg of yeah. nitro. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, so we set a, we set a goal um, to get like a kegerator. Oh. Yeah. And, and we missed the goal. <laughs> but we got, that's like on the list. I mean, so I can hook it up to a kegerator with that. Yes. That would work. Oh, for but sure. It, yeah, you can't. It has to be uh, nitrogen though. Nitrogen infused instead okay. of uh, CO two. Okay. But yeah, yeah but we whatever. can we can definitely we can help you set it, it up. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Oh my gosh, oh, yeah. that'd be awesome. <laughs> uh, people are like remember, you know, the new scooters plus team is always bouncing off the walls. <laughs> now they're really bouncing off the walls. <laughs> that's great. Sorry, yeah. sorry, to interrupt. no, no, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> we'll talk, we'll talk later about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> So yeah, so I, I so, forgot where we were. I don't know either. <laughs> we're, we're all looking at each other. I remember. So the wholesale accounts, yeah. So we so we partnered with with a bunch of local businesses and stuff like that. Um, people, and, and for some yeah. of them, you'll do like specialty roasts for. I know for Dave's New York Deli, you do a special roast for him. Yeah. So anyone else? So so he came up to us, um, wanted to do. Hey, you know, I, I I wanted to do this unique unique coffee that would basically um, go with his awesome brand that he has going. So, so we just want to come up with a creative, uh, with a custom roast for him. Um, something that yeah, cool. really nowhere else would, basically no one else sells. Yeah. Um, so, and then. Um, Some are uh, like Daybreak, they sell our coffee, Leonardo's. Um, we have Vitality Bowl in Jacksonville. In J- Jacksonville. Um, public in general, which. Oh, public in general, which, yeah. Which, which I love. Yeah. Um, Oh my gosh. I know, we're like dropping the ball I take here. advantage um, at uh, yeah. break a little bit too much. Yeah. I'll just go in there and sit at the bar and have eight <laughs> cups. But uh, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, no, uh, well, thank you. Yeah, no. uh, yeah. the people at Daybreak, uh, Patty and Michael, they're they're great. They're that's a great really team over there, too. so. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Do you, guys, uh, do you guys get sick of working with each other as brothers? <laughs> okay, so there are, um, we have rules. <laughs> That's it. There's yes. rules. There's like, rules. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> There's yeah. boundaries. There's boundaries. Okay. So, like, he has strengths that I let him do. A and lot of them. I, he has. Oh, oh my god. A lot of strengths. <laughs> 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 and then I have strengths that he, he doesn't he doesn't do so um so for the thing like, <laughs> like what are you there's about? like um <laughs> you have like one thing yep. <laughs> <laughs> so in general like w- you know w- we respect each other's boundaries um when, yeah. when it goes to working behind the bar we don't do that together anymore um okay. like there was a point where um he would try to trip me every single time I walked behind the bar to the point where I had to have a cup of hot water and I told him I was going to pour it on his leg if he ever did it again. And I poured it on his leg one time and he's never done it again. But um, we don't work behind the bars uh, together anymore. So yeah. 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 But you guys, sense, so you're yeah. saying that you do like work behind the bar still or? Okay, so we're not on the schedule, but we usually work like an hour or two. At, I, I try to get, visit three locations a day, three out of the six. And he, I don't know. I mean, that's my rule. I don't know. He probably doesn't do anything. Um, but um, <laughs> a four out of the six every, every day. <laughs> but uh, like, are you doing that from a customer experience thing? Like, customers want to like want to see you and, and you know, or, or is it more of like you need like you need the help at each location? Well, no, like, it's it's not the help. Our employees are amazing, and um, they care more than I probably even 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 think they do. You know, I don't know. I, they're great. It's not the it's it's not that they need help. It's um. I just want to see how the bar is going. I want to visit the customers. I want the employees to know that I'm present mm, um, and good. involved. And, and you know, with six locations, they, they don't always see me all the time. So, cool. yeah, I don't ever want them to think that uh, the we're absentee, absentee owners. Yeah. So also, yeah. you just need coffee throughout the day. That's so true it's too. Easy yeah, way yeah. To that's do true it. too. It's like I mean, I'm doing you, it anyway. Yeah. If you show up to each location, then you like you're like you're, first then cup, you're getting first my first cup. cup. So you have the Opus Challenge, which is a shot of espresso at each location I'm, as you go along. Hold on, it. is this real? Oh my god! Uh, actually, <laughs> actually, this is a great idea. actually, we, we, we were going to do it. So it, uh, so we were going to do um, if you can buy a shot of espresso at every single one of our locations and present it, we were going to give you a fifty dollar gift card. Um, but it has to be the same morning. I'll Same credit tomorrow. card. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So, um, 
Anyway. All right, yeah. so, so back to back to you guys being brothers and working okay. together. Because <laughs> I work with my brother yeah. too. Like Who's the brother. better barista? Oh, hands down, I. Yeah, probably Brett. Yeah. At, yeah. at everything or, hey, or the artwork. That. Um, Who's the better artwork? Whoa, now. Hey. Um, every, everything. <laughs> everything. Everything. Yeah. I'll give it to him. He's fine. <laughs> and do you guys, like, from an administrative standpoint or from, like, co founder, co CEO, whatever you guys, like, refer yeah. to you guys, uh, yourselves as, I mean, do you guys have very defined roles? Like, cause you said, I mean, yeah. I know you said you so, have different strengths, which I think is great when it comes to a partnership. Like I, right. lot, when people are always asking me for my opinions on entrepreneurship, like, hey, I'm thinking about, you know, getting into a partnership. Like I, that's, those are some of the first questions I ask are like, are your strengths opposite? Because that will do a lot in business. Yeah. Um, but I mean, like what are y'all's individual roles within the organization? Uh, so so I, I do most of the financial and then, um, which I, we're probably gonna talk about this later, but also most of the real estate work. Okay. Um, and then he does. I'm clearly the good looks or behind, he's the, behind he's the, the company. company. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So what, very oh like God. operative? Yeah, yeah, yeah and, exactly. uh, a, a lot yeah. of day-to-day stuff, a lot of ordering, um, basically looking over there, the uh, the roasting part of the business, uh, the quality and, mm. and stuff like that, so. Um, and That's, the catering business has gone like through the roof. Yeah, too, the catering because, is, uh, uh, we're super reliable and we provide, and we're e- it's easy to order off our website. So a lot of like yeah. UF and UF Health um, departments have like really come to us for breakfast and brunch catering. So yeah, yeah that that's like a whole nother part of the business that and, we're doing. And then like jumping on so. the cold brew and stuff like that, we've been, yeah. I've been basically leading so. that and jumping on that and, and the wholesale as well, so. I thought cold brew was nonsense, but I trusted him <laughs> that he thought it was a good direction to go, so. Was that more um, of a, like, cause I know there was a, it just seems like within the last few years that the cold brew thing like has really taken off. Right, and even like Star, yeah. I think Starbucks just yeah. now like yeah. just did something really big with cold brew too. So I mean, it's, it seems like it's it's trending. Like, are you just staying on top of those those trends and what and what customer like our customer? This is what's this is the problem with me podcasting. <laughs> I like start asking <laughs> no, one good. question and then I'm no, like, oh, good. like oh this you know customers come in. For example, parents when they were buying. Yeah. scooters right they're like buying scooters for the kids and then this this question kept coming up oh, you know my my kid's gonna come home for the summer like what do they do with their scooter yeah and i'm like um you store it with us of course yes. <laughs> exactly and we have a summer storage program and we and now we store like 300 scooters every summer <laughs> because we like wow. we, we ran off with that and that never would have happened unless a customer you know basically requ- and and off Way well, requested the reason why you guys have been so successful too is you've solved the whole story of buying the scooter. Well, and I think I think you have to, but you know, when it comes to like this, is this very much like customers saying, "Hey, like, when are you guys gonna get cold brew? When are you gonna get cold brew?" Or is it just you being so on top of the trends? Yeah, I mean, I I, I think it's a combination of of both. Yeah. Um, I think being part of the industry, you know, other roasters, other people who own coffee shops, and other people, and you kind of see kind of what. Uh, people are doing in, in other cities, specifically the West Coast. Uh, I have a friend who lives in Chicago, and he's he's always on top of the brand new things. And so we always talk talk a lot. And he's like, "Hey, have you thought about doing the cold brew and 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 brewing it, bottling, kegging?" Um, and so we're like, "Well, we we know we have five locations. We know we can s- sell a lot there." Um, and so um, just just keeping up with that and. Um, yeah, and so and just keep it with like the the industry trends and gotcha. stuff like that, and the, and the cold brew, yeah, it's taken off. Like, do you, yeah. like, do you like test it at like one location before you go to the to your other ones, or are you just kind of like, oh, let's just put a few in each location, see how it does? So, are you talking about the cold brew specifically, yeah, or like yeah. new products or anything? So I think so I think huh. the, the the cold brew specific, um, you we we definitely know where um, it sells the most. I mean, we look at the atrium and we, we switch out kegs almost every day okay, over cool. at, cool. um, That's over neat. at our atrium location. Yeah. So there's a lot of like turn up keg turnover. So we know that the people at the atrium are consuming a lot of cold brew. So, um, but yeah, so, so, so we know, and then maybe some other places that, that we know, um, that aren't maybe selling, selling as well, that maybe a, a different product can, can go in its place. Like we can, um, Figure that, figure that out. What are y'all's hours at each location? Uh, so mainly we open at, uh, at Shands and some of the other UF Health locations at 6.20 in the morning to 8 p.m. Okay. And then some of um, like the Med, Med Plaza or like some of those clinics that don't open till 
like 7.30 maybe. We open those at 7.30. 7.30. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so 7.30 to 4, because that's when people stop going in the building. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, you said, like I'm, I know a lot of your morning was going yeah. from location to location. Yeah. I mean, I know that you guys have to go and you have to, to roast it. I mean, is that like happening in the afternoon hours? Or like, is it all over the place? Are you guys up at three o'clock in the morning roasting coffee? Uh, <laughs> 2 a.m. in the morning? I'm fascinated uh, by what no. your schedule no, is. No, okay, so we, we have a full-time roaster who does, Mike, so Mike, the full-time roast, he does all the roasting, he does the um, farmer's market and he does a lot of the wholesale stuff okay. and like packaging and yeah. online orders too. Anyone who orders online, he ships that, he packages and ships that out. So how many um, people do you guys employ? Well, and then we have a, a, a full-time delivery driver. So one thing we realize, okay. these kiosks, they, they don't have any storage. And so we need to bring out a full load of inventory almost every day. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah so we have a delivery truck that leaves at 5 a.m. and delivers to each location um, one set of inventory the first run, then the second set of inventory the second run. Um, uh, so yeah, so those are our two like full time boys. Then we have like uh, uh, forty three baristas oh, between wow. all six. Yeah, yeah. Dang, so, I know, right? Yeah. I know. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> What's that yeah. like? <laughs> <laughs> that, well, uh, so a- <laughs> um, as, as we've gone, I've I've tried to make it easier to um, just to operate to you know uh, automize things, and so. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm, that's I, what makes it easier, just automization. Yeah, uh-huh. want, so let's dive into yeah. that a little bit because I think that could bring a lot of the audience, yeah. audience value. I mean, you know, is there a tool that you are using that just helps with scheduling that many people? And is it one, <laughs> are one of you guys doing it or somebody else doing it? So one of the things that we're looking, so a lot of times, a lot of students, they have the same, um, they have the same schedule every week. And so a lot of times like we can we can place them the same hours every week throughout the semester. Got it. So that's not as hard. We are looking into scheduling software, which I think you guys use. Yeah, we um, I mean we use a program called When I Work and I mean it and it works really, really well for us and you yeah. can like you know, you can clock in and out on your phone and through an app yeah. and you can actually yeah. like geofence it so if they're outside of a radius or something like that, they oh. it won't allow them to do it and um, and it works. It yeah. works really, really well for us. We like it. We're specifically interested in just like scheduling. How, how do you put forty people into six locations? So I don't know if that has multiple locations or not. Yeah, it um, does. Do you have people that cross locate? Go to yes, two different exactly. ones. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So in order to, um, we, yeah, we, so we try to work in, uh, baristas at multiple locations just so they, um, you know, it's new things. Yeah. So yeah. What's the, uh, you know you're a brand new employee, you haven't been a barista before, how quickly can you guys get them up to speed if they have some talent? Is there talent needed? Yes. Oh, <laughs> yeah, well, we, we try to hire attitude and then you can always train them. Yeah. So um, obviously some people are more detailed than others, but we can work with that. If they have a great attitude, they can easily apologize to a customer if they don't make a, a good drink. So anyway, yeah. um, so right off the bat, we, um, well, yeah, so we have a whole training this point. I mean, they start on the register, they get familiarized themselves with all the drinks, and after about a month, we have a couple tests, and then they, we train them on the bar. Okay. So, on the espresso machine, yeah. Very cool. My but, golf course in Las Vegas bought a basically a $55,000 espresso maker, and uh, we didn't go through much training. So, <laughs> no. I, I did a little training. I'm doing like 100 things. I'm still pulling espresso <laughs> shots, mostly for myself. I got, I got decent at it. I could fill yeah. in on like a three to four o'clock at your... But yeah, so we'll call location. you if you need, if we need yeah. a sub, so. Uh, we, we can have a throwdown yeah, later, I'll later, later on today. Pay me. Yeah. <laughs> um, I had a couple questions about, yeah. um, going back to Mike a little bit, with your collaborations in the community. Mm-hmm. Um, Opus was one of the first companies that I kind of met after Best of Gainesville had kind of been in the shadows for a while. So we reached out to them for a music festival we ran last year called Trueville, and um, they were they jumped right on board. It was at High Dive, close by. And uh, we came in, made a little video for them, did some promotions, painted the 34th Street wall, did all sorts of stuff. But just dealing with them, they were like, yeah, let's do it. Like, you know, and I know you guys are at all the art fairs, you know, the farmers markets, Heartwood. You know, Mike's always telling me he's everywhere. Um, how do you guys pick and choose, you know, what you guys sponsor, where you guys are located? Because it's a lot of setup. It's a, you yeah. know, it's an investment of time and effort, but the brand awareness is, is crucial. Sure. So as we're trying to, um, 
Well, we're, I don't know if we're going to talk about this, but yeah, as we're, we're going to open on that Fourth Avenue, yep. so we're trying to get more in the community and market more and have more people see us. I mean, we've been in business. This is going to be our 16th year, and I mean, there's still people who show up at the farmers market and they're like, "Hey, yeah. when did you open here?" Oh, and uh, you know, that's our fault, really. But um, when I know even when we yeah. post something on Best of or Eat Gainesville, like people love it. They're like, "Where is this place?" And I'm like, yeah. "Well, yeah, it's coming closer to you, yeah, but you can to go get, get it now." You know, <laughs> you can probably oh, yeah. park your car and right, uh, yeah, exactly. at the hospital. And <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah. I like we we try to do as many um, UF Health events as possible. Like that's basically there's there's always a run or there's always stuff like that 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 we would love to be a part of. Um, and then that's a lot of our focus. And then we also try to do a lot of community stuff too. And unfortunately, we can't do every single community um, event, but we try to do it as, as much as possible and as much um, that Mike's able to take on or, or one of us is able to take on. So um, our main, yeah, our, our, our main support is basically whatever UF Health is trying to support. Yep. We try to build onto that because they've been so good to us that we want to support them in their initiatives too. So, yeah. um, so that's our main thing, but then, um, setting up in the community that's also to like help and get out there so people like to see us and realize us yeah, yeah. but it's an expense because we're paying mike to go out there and yeah. set up at all these places he does but he yeah. does a fantastic job though with the prize yeah. wheel i don't know if you've been out to the, the farmer's market in a while spin to win spin, spin the win, win dude. <laughs> <laughs> hey you can win a full pound of coffee sometimes yeah. you can win one of those oh those gosh. cool guys it's it's really cool two dollar cold brews or three dollar cold brews dollar hot coffees it's it's he, awesome. He gives a lot away. Yeah, he texted <laughs> me one time. He was so happy because it was something like 21 people won on the wheel. And he gave away 21 bottles of cold brew. And I'm like, I'm like he's like, he's, he's like, the, the wheel is really hot right now. And I'm like, cool it down. Cool it down. Cool it down. <laughs> It's true. I you know. just gotta make sure that you get an Instagram post out of it. There's gotta be like a caveat. It's yeah, like you're it's gonna, gonna post yeah. this right yeah. in front oh, of Oh, that's a good go. idea. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. We we'll yeah. got some good like consulting it. work. Uh, <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, he'll send you the invoice later. Right, great, great. Uh, Tim, you, you got this, right? Okay. <laughs> and with the, the UF Health thing, too, because I shared this on Eat Gainesville about a month ago, mm-hmm. you guys did a promotion for Fast, the uh, stroke awareness. That was really cool. Yeah. They did these sleeves that said fast on it which is i forget what it what it is exactly what it stands for, what it stands for. Okay. But yeah a, you know just an awareness it's program the four steps if you see someone having a stroke so which honestly if i had my sleeve i would know but um i i, I know the first one is like face <laughs> drooping is the f yeah so just little uh, things like that i think make you yeah. know when you go to starbucks and they misspell your name on purpose <laughs> and then you go to opus and you get like a sleeve that has some community awareness very stark differences at least to me. Actually, all, all the sleeves that we have on our cups, they're all UF Health programs. Um, yeah. So I think you saw that, but we okay. also do like... So we have the United Way uh, yeah. and, their, and their campaign. We have a, a Breastfeeding Awareness Month that's actually coming up um, in yeah. August. And so we have a new sleeve coming out uh, with that. We've partnered up with the UF Health uh, Rehabilitation. Yeah. Um, and so we have a, a sleeve coming out with that. That was actually a really... It's going to be a really cool interactive sleeve where it's going to be a, a crossword puzzle with um, oh, with different cool. uh, allows. Yeah, I love um, that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so, so we try to partner up with basically with a lot of programs and try to have their um, their stuff yeah. on our on our sleeve. So yeah, so, that's really cool. I mean, can we dive into this little Fourth Avenue yeah, location thing it. a little bit because let's do it. Um, and like you you already said something a little bit about that. Like, what is what is that? <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So um, actually, going way back, this is uh, so one of the lessons we learned from opening that coffee shop on University Avenue was that um, we wanted to start owning the real estate that we we were operating in. Of course, that's impossible on the UF Health campus, but like going forward, we wanted to. Um, we wanted to be in control. So um, we were renting someplace on 13th Street where a roaster was, and I knew they were gonna de- be demolishing the building eventually. So it was about 2011, we started, we started looking for a building that we could afford and to move our roaster in. Um, and it just so happens that, yeah, we bought this piece of property um, at 307 Southwest 4th Avenue. It's between 6th Street and, down, and Main Street. So between 6th Street and downtown, Southwest 4th Avenue. Um, and then, so we opened the roaster there. It was next to like an old, uh, like a convenience store. It wasn't, um, wasn't, wasn't, it wasn't like, I mean, it was a convenience store. Okay, so, but I, I knew that someday this was going to be a, a hot, a hot street. So because it was you know, right between UF and downtown. So um, 
from what I've been reading with uh, with buying property, you know, like book ending. So like, you know, there's UF downtown, eventually it'd meet in the middle. Um, and it happened a lot sooner than we thought it would. Uh, it happened like just a couple years, you know, there's developments there. But then we asked the, the owner, the, the, there was a five unit strip mall next door, which wasn't getting any attention really. And it was basically, there was like two tenants, but other than that, it was basically vacant. Um, it wasn't being taken care of. We just asked the owner if he wanted to sell it, and he sold that to us too. So now we owned um, Third Street to Fifth Street, and we uh, we didn't exactly know what we were going to do with it then, but it, it slowly evolved. And so we're opening now. We're opening the. It's called the Fourth Avenue Food Park, and That's so cool. yeah. So uh, so we went to the farmers market and asked these companies if they wanted to take the next step and open like a relocation. And um, Humble Pie was the first one. So I told them that we would do your build out if you open here um, and get on board. And someday this is going to be an awesome place. And they opened when the convenience store was still open. They had they they saw it. They had the you know they had the vision with us, and they're still there. So they're going to open a real restaurant. And Cilantro Taco jumped on board. They're going to open a restaurant. Oh, cool. Baker Baker, um, Amanda's Bake Shop. Um, they're reopening to the public. Um, Fehrenbacher Sausage, they're open currently. Um, How many places can you put in there? There's gonna, So there's seven units. Um, and so we still have room for one more, um, which we're not sure what we're gonna do with yet. So if there's an awesome like food tenant, um, we're still looking for like an awesome place to complement the others. But between the buildings, uh, so it's called the Fourth Avenue Food Park. I have two kids, so I want it to be like family friendly. I want a lot of outdoor space. There's a lot of like trees that create a lot of shade. Um, there's gonna be benches, like small playground stuff that kids can play on. Um, and then there's like, there's gonna, be like, there's gonna be a stage, and then there's gonna be like a guest setup, uh, like, a, a, like a stand or like a pergola, where like a guest vendor can, can set up every day. So, cause we don't have a dessert place. Um, so we're thinking maybe like ice cream places can set up or like other places that complement the, sure. uh, the food park. So yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and then in, in the middle there'll be benches and stuff like that where if you show up with a group of people, let's say one, one wants humble pie, the other yeah. wants cilantro or Fehrenbacher sausage, they can all grab whatever want, whatever they want and basically just uh, just meet in the middle of the park and just- <laughs> That's awesome. Just, yeah. When do you guys so. see this being like complete or like completely filled, I guess? So we're we're court we're coordinate so um, you know six of the seven spots are at least so oh, but we're sweet. coordinating the opening with the anchor tenant which is Cilantro Taco um, we've just been behind like through permitting and um, trying to get through the city's uh, their requests for the property and responding to all those submissions so once we get through that um, it should only be a couple months before we open there so has it been a struggle yeah. with that stuff you know it's uh they, it's um. We, we were trying to, uh, so there's a couple things. So we're, we're, you know, like everything we do, we try to like bootstrap it and pay for it in cash, you know? So um, the, ar the architect that we got, um, he gave us a good price, but he didn't do like a complete breakdown of everything that the city was gonna expect. So like we're backtracking and trying to like fill in those details that yeah. if I had paid an architect up front to complete the entire thing, um, to complete the entire layout and everything that fulfill everything that the city wanted, it would have been easier. But also, the city asked for they asked for certain things, you know. So we, like we, we submit to the city, and they have um, you know they come back with questions. And I wish that they would come back with all of their questions. Right. But we submit again and answer all their questions, but they come back with different questions. And I, I you know it just takes long because like. Every month that they, every time they, they, they come back with questions, the city, I don't know if they realize, but like we're spending thousands of dollars um, just holding the property with no one in it. Right. And um, this well, is, we're on our third round and hopefully yeah. they don't come back a fourth time. So well, I, I, yeah. like, I appreciate you sharing that because yeah. I mean, obviously like with the podcast, we want to highlight like everything that makes Gainesville so great, great businesses like yours. Um, but but I think there is some improvement needed. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've, ha I've had yeah. my I've had my own struggles um, with the city, with specifically with some zoning stuff in the past. I mean, like for example, like new scooters for less uh, yeah. has always been you know scooters were always zoned. Now now this has evolved and this has changed. So there's been progress, which is something that I like to see. But we were always they always wanted to put us as business automotive. 
you know, like consider us a car dealership. Yeah. We're selling mm-hmm. scooters yeah. and they want to consider us a car dealership. And, you know, especially when we started, the, the only places were 10,000, you know, car dealerships that went out of business, <laughs> 10,000 yeah. square feet with 500 parking spots yeah. Yeah. up on Main. Exactly. And it's like, it's like, guys, <laughs> like, let me, let me explain. We need to be zoned like for retail where we can line up scooters. And, and luckily like this place was grandfathered in as business automotive. So this mm. is business automotive, thank God. Um, <laughs> but but, but seriously, like that kind of stuff just yeah. drives me crazy because I'm like, look, like I line up scooters, they don't have any fuel in them. They're inside a beautiful showroom. And, and so like we've had our own issues and I, you know, like, yes, I want to highlight everything that makes Gainesville so great. I want this podcast ultimately, you know, help us bring in new businesses, keep our talent here, highlight incredible businesses like yours here. But I also want to j- just be a voice for small business. Um, and and hopefully somebody from the city listens to some of this kind of stuff and is just like, yes, like we, we will start making making some changes. And there has been in my 14 years as an entrepreneur here in Gainesville, there has been a ton of progress. So that's that's the good news. Um, but but I, I can empathize with, yeah. with the back and forth, the back and <laughs> yeah, forth, yeah. the back and forth, and it takes so much time, and you're wasting money, and it's like, like let's go, let's get this, let's get, Just get it stuff, set up. Yeah, let's but get it together. You're right. They, they, they have improved a lot, and also everyone uh, because back 10 years ago. Um, like you, you'd go to the, the Thomas Center and they, they'd ask you a que- like you'd ask a question and they'd give you like a one word answer and then keep typing or turn their back to you or something like that. now every at least everyone's nice yes and like they'll go out of their way and answer it so at least there's that and like I can really commend them for that that's pretty awesome because it's actually pleasant going to Thomas Center now yes um, and they have their new um, online portal online portal where you could submit for permits and things like that, and you could uh, see what they're doing and where your permit is at. That's pretty awesome. It's just the, um, it's just the time, yeah. and it, it's just the time. And the, we ran into one issue. So one, one plan, one planner left the city. A new planner came in, and we're in the middle of our per- permitting. And then the new, but the new planner didn't understand anything that the uh. or understand why the old planner was was requesting this and was was doing it this way, mm. and that that took a month to to figure out too. So yeah, yeah, it's I don't know. Uh, it's just different. It's really different yeah. mentality. I mean, when you're an entrepreneur, oh exactly, entrepreneurs yeah. like us, you're like <laughs> just get it done. Let's go. No, I know, I know. <laughs> like we'll zero fix- to hundred overnight. You're like let's like let's go, and they're like oh well, we gotta like check this and check this and it, it so I can I can empathize with that I definitely think it's just different mentalities in you terms know, of positions and it, 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 it may even have to be that guy like for me I'm, if there's something I'm hey let's do it we'll figure out the details later them uh, they're probably thinking we need to figure out all the details first and then let's do it so right. um I don't know maybe it's just the way it is uh I don't know so whatever yeah. <laughs> I don't know. well I yeah. I appreciate you diving into a, a, a little bit of it because one um what like I think it's awesome. Like I'm excited to see what comes out of that. Um, you know, it kind of reminds me a little bit of when uh, Kelly Hazori from Big Island Bulls was diving into. Uh, I mean, it wasn't about Gainesville. It was more specifically about St. Augustine and some yeah. of the, just some of the outdated laws regarding like. Uh, it was like the food truck stuff, right? I don't, I don't remember what well, episode Fourth that Ave was. Fourth Ave is but. where they've been testing the automated bus too. So oh, you'd think it'd yeah. be like advantageous for them to help these guys out and figure it out. So that's an awesome bus stop. You know, it, it seems easy, but yeah. obviously we know it's not. Well, I'm, I'm excited to yeah, see it come awesome. to fruition, man. Oh, it, yeah. it's, it's gonna be amazing. And like, we've taken these old 1950s buildings that were decrepit and falling apart, and we've like, we've completely turned them around. I mean, if, if you wanna go on Google Maps and look, do Street View of 2006, 2007, it's oh my terrible. God, man, that's a dump. Yeah. yeah. So and then now go now and it's like everything's like painted nice and we've kept the old building because I'm really into like keeping um, and maintaining like historic buildings. Not that 1950s buildings are that historic, but um, it's 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 not getting yeah. torn down. And, yeah, and, exactly. Uh, Six story buildings getting put yeah, up. Right. So, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And if you haven't been over there to the to Fahrenbacher's, which would be the most customer facing one right now that's open. Correct. It's yeah. it's awesome. They've got a back deck that's really cool. You can you can see what the fourth app food park is going to become, yeah. um, kind of before it fully debuts. Yeah. Um, the one thing I wanted to get to before it gets too late in the podcast 
is tech, talk a little bit about, about the economics of coffee and your guys' relationship with where you're sourcing, you know, your relationships with the farmers and the different countries you guys visit and how that whole thing works. I know I'm a, I love coffee. One of my favorite shows on TV used to be Dangerous Grounds, which I'm sure you guys watched. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just give us a little kind of peek into what, what, it, what like channel is that on? I is think it? it was on Travel Channel. Travel, yeah. And he I, like literally you know, gets dropped. Or anything, yeah, or? probably gets dropped off in a helicopter on top of a mountain. I'm sure it's all right. And fake, then, and, yeah, and then right. he picks this amazing coffee just out of like that nowhere. no one's ever found. Yeah, you know. and then manages to <laughs> it's bring actually back uh, yeah. hundred bags of this <laughs> magical coffee somehow. And yeah. I think the ends is like him like. It's already roasted. He's like, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah. and, he uh, spends like a night in jail somewhere. Yeah, you know. is he really? Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, <laughs> well, that's cool. not realistic. No, um, I don't know. Whatever. Well, I definitely yeah. love it because, like, on your, on the website, like on y'all's website, it's this beautiful video, and it's you know you guys traveling and going to yeah. the farm so, and stuff. So like, the, I love that. The best coffee it grows on the sides of volcanoes and grown by and it's grown by family farmers and small time farms, so that's what we'd really try to import. That's what we really try to get, and we work with only importers that get coffee and have relationships with these growers. Um, it's all small time, um, like fairly traded coffee, and. I, I have two young kids, so I don't go on these trips, but my brother does go. Um, yeah, it's it's, and, it's rough sometimes. Oh, no, uh, it's rough. <laughs> kind of uh, taking these trips, but um, yeah, as as Tim was saying, uh, our coffee comes from these small farms, and and our importer has these relationships with with these farmers and and such. So I've had the opportunity to. Um, to go to Costa Rica with with these importers and and a couple of other roasters around the U.S. and uh, um, check out some of these farms and and see the cool stuff that that they're doing and, and create these relationships with these farmers and um, and basically and I think even when I got back from Costa Rica this year where I was able to bring a bag of roasted coffee back to the farmer and and back to hey this is this is your coffee. It has your name on it, Maria Lena. This is like oh, this amazing so cool. yeah. uh, coffee, <laughs> and the, and let you know that everybody in Gainesville loves this coffee. And so, thank you. So, so we're we've made a commitment to continue to buy coffee from her and stuff like that. And and it's important that the that the um, farmer gets feedback uh, because a lot of times, because it, it kind of keeps them going and it kind of keeps their their quality standards high. Is, is when they get feedback and, and when they, hey, like, keep doing what you're doing because customers are loving this stuff. And so, um, so we've, we've developed that relationship and uh, we've also worked with a couple other small importers that have direct relationships um, in Honduras as well as Colombia. Um, Brett, where have you traveled? Looking forward to coffees. So Costa Rica, uh, Guatemala is the one uh, with the video on our website. That was that was intense uh, for the sole purpose. We jumped in this van, traveled eight hours uh, throughout Guatemala. We were actually pretty close to Mexico. Uh, they had all these little stops and stuff like that. And um, our driver literally told us like, hey, if you can duck, that'd be great. Um, <laughs> And so, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> what? Um, this is dangerous grounds. We dangerous could just right, right. Redo it. But Dude. but but we got to the farm and it was the most beautiful farm in the world. I mean, you just you just you're 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 looking out and you see all this coffee just growing on the side of a mountain and you see the spring going through and you see like the patio of all the coffee getting dried and so um, so we continue to buy coffee from that farm. Uh, we've been to. I went to Nicaragua on a coffee farm there. That was actually one of my first um, uh, origin trips. Was was in Nicaragua. I actually proposed to my wife and on the coffee <laughs> farm cool. in Nicaragua. So um, yeah, so be, being able to travel to these places and be able to check out like the uh, where the coffee is actually being grown and actually and actually spend time with the farmers and and even like the people picking the coffee where where they're they're so. They're so warm and so um, they're always smiling and, and and stuff like that, and they're always happy to see you. and And, and they always kind of get a kick out of it when you 
when you go out in the bushes, start picking some of the beans, and, and, and how slow you're going, and they're just kind of like looking over, like, oh my gosh, like this this guy's like Super slow. yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and so and so just witnessing that, and and to us, I think that's that's important. Like we've had the opportunity to be able to to visit the origins, and, and we're at a size that that we're able to uh, uh, spend some time there and really import a lot a lot of that coffee. So, um, and and then we hope to continue. Uh, I think we're planning a trip to Peru as well. Mm. Uh, there's some great coffee coming out of there. Um, that I didn't know that either. So yeah. So well, you have two kids, so <laughs> right, right, right. it's, it's going to be me. Um, stay in your are lane. You yes. I know. Yeah, Damn, stay in your lane. <laughs> this is this is the my part of the business. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly, okay. So yeah. So um, I think I think continue these relationships, and and these relationships are are super important to Opus. Yeah. Um, and I think and, it's and important to the consumers too. You know, especially now. You know, they want to know where's this farm? What's their name? You know, who are they? Do they have kids? You know, right. where is this mountain? Yeah, yeah. people are very um, conscious of that stuff. Yeah, now. the storytelling aspect yeah, is yeah. so important because they they can feel it. And and and, and one of the things where um, the, the the farm in Costa Rica, um, so this woman's parents owned the farm, and they were getting her to retire, and so. She, they went to each one of their kids to see, hey, who wants this farm? Nobody wanted, nobody wanted the farm ex- except for except for the woman, um, except for their daughter. And so she's like, I, I will, I will run this farm. And this is a, it's an amazing woman. Um, so she gets up at five a.m. She tends to her coffee farm, does does everything that she needs to do, um, and then her husband actually owns a dairy right down the road. So it actually works pretty well. Uh, but but she she. End up just instead of this farm being sold to someone else, to someone else, she decided just to keep it in the family, and so and that and that really touched me as well as it being one of the. Um, There's only a woman owning a coffee farm is very rare in Costa Rica, and so we're like, this is this is great. Like we'd we'd be happy to support a, a woman-owned business in Costa Rica, a, a, a coffee farm. So and we we I think we just bought what 600 pounds of coffee from her. Dang, that's sweet. Or a oh. thousand. We bought a lot. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 Got so, um, yeah. So, and then, and then we've also bought bought some other coffee from Costa Rica as well. Uh, I think this this basically the year before last, we jumped in the back of this guy's trailer, and he like took us around these coffee farms, and and uh, it was a little scary, uh, but it was it was an experience, and and he was he was super excited that all twelve of us were packed in the back of his little like trailer, <laughs> and uh, um, so it, it's and it's, yeah, it's just an experience that that we're uh, that we're happy Great. that we can be was, a part of. I was trying it. to so find cool. it because I was when I was like just browsing all his website, you guys had like an annual report from like oh, 2015 yeah. or something like yeah, that. Yeah, so we I um, thought that was so cool. Yeah, we need. I think it was 2016 or maybe. Yeah. We, we need to do that again. We, we Man, try to do it every it other year. It was so interesting. Yeah. Like, it was just like stats, right? It was yeah. like company grew 20%. We have this many employees. We like brewed this many thousands of pounds of coffee. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was just like fascinated by yeah. like these these stats. and. Uh, yeah, we're going to do that again this year. That's so cool. it's, 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 I think we try to do it every other year. So. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. I would definitely keep doing that just from, from a customer standpoint you know yeah. I was like I was like man this is super interesting I, I think we, I really loved it I think we printed out about a thousand of them and we we had them at all of our bars so customers could take them so yeah it was just really time intensive yeah, so, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, I think yeah. I, I think one of the things was was how how many pools we filled up by the number of cough or the, yeah. the brewed coffee that we sold and it's it some yeah. absurd stat that way and, yeah uh, but that's so interesting though yeah, like, yeah. I love it so cool. Well, we need to start wrapping up, but um, like let's but let's do. You have a couple I've more got, questions. I've got one more question. Well, yeah. we'll probably get to this at the end. But I wanted to know your personal coffee habits. Yeah. What do you guys drink? <laughs> so better, I, better I not prefer... be like a frappuccino. Or <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I honestly, I just drink regular brewed coffee. Okay. Um, it, it, like it's uh, I, I, my, uh, the coffee bars are designed to serve you coffee, so you can like go and be productive and get things done. They're not like sit down coffee bars, relax, sip coffee. So I'm like, get my coffee and go to work. And that that's the way I, uh, yeah, my I like it. medium roast, dark roast. Oh, medium dark. Medium yeah, roast. yeah, yeah. Like medium, medium dark. Yeah, okay. yeah. So. Um, so I make coffee at my house before I, before I leave to work. Um, so I usually just to get a coffee for the road, and then when I stop by locations, I'll either get a shot of espresso or just fill up a little cup, which each 
location I visit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do that too. Yeah, yeah. So I, espresso shots at every location. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. By the time you get to the last location, you're like, <laughs> I probably drink eight to ten cups a day, dude. Or yeah, that's a lot of coffee, bro. You are super healthy. So <laughs> I know, right? You you seem so alert, by the way. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't really phase me. I feel like I've. Yeah. I've yeah, you're you're aging happy. really well. Actually. Yeah, totally, man. Yeah, Colin, though. Yeah. Anyway, so Brett <laughs> Brett Brett has a thing where he'll uh, so, sometimes he'll he'll match any employee shot for shot on espresso, yeah. and um, Brett's only been beaten one time, only once. That was uh, espresso shot number twelve. So. Dang. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah. Have you guys done a competition or anything like on a national coffee day? We should absolutely do that. <laughs> That'd be awesome. We should do that. I know. I what know. is national we coffee should. day? Do you know? I don't know. I was oh. Just about to ask. I believe it's September 29th. Oh, so, you know. Yeah, well, I, that's I coming know. up. That's I right. know. So Wait, get ready for the first yeah. Actually, the inaugural oh, Opus. Is this, yeah. is this episode air? Espresso challenge in September. This sweet. Hey, it's National Coffee Day coming up. Make sure you, you support. <laughs> yeah. uh, like we're recording. Look these out for espresso challenge. Oh. I like it. We didn't make couples month, but we'll take National Coffee Day. So, okay. <laughs> National Coffee Day. It's got to be like right around the corner now. I'll do yeah. a beat Best of Gainesville challenge there. That's cool. Oh, nice. Okay. I'll, yeah. I'll take anyone yeah, down. Let's, dude, let's do something. That'd be, okay. that'd be sick. Let's do it. So, well, like, let's, uh, I mean, we haven't done this last couple podcasts because we just run out of time, but yeah. let's do like one or two Gainesville questions. Yeah. yeah? So, Great. So, what's your, uh, what's your favorite restaurant in Gainesville? Shoot. <laughs> uh, breakfast, day break, uh, everything else, public in general. Cool. So, um, I, just because of nostalgia, we were going here when we moved to Gaines in 2003, 2004, uh, the top. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I love the top. Ty. All right. So, what's something locally that you guys really like to do? But you know, with work and other things, you get busy on. What is something you wish you were doing a little bit more? Or could get to do a little bit more in town. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Everybody looks at him. Yeah, Go. seriously, it's okay. <laughs> uh, um, I, I, I play water polo, right? So we, we have a. Um, I actually, my wife and I, we coach the UF women's team also, oh, very cool. and so I wish we could do that more, and I wish we could play water polo more. But I don't know. So yeah. not if anyone's out there plays water polo, there's Masters Water Polo at the Northeast Bowl. Yeah, so, yeah. cool. Go ahead. Colin, you're invited. Colin, you're <laughs> um, I, I I play water polo as well. Uh, we're we're on the same Masters team, but I think cycling. Uh, I think cycling. Bef- before we moved to Gainesville, yeah. we're, we're we we rode a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's one thing with like the business and stuff like that, where it's just kind of taking a, a a back a back seat. So, I don't know. but uh, favorite local beer. I like First Mag. Yeah, me too. Yeah, First Mag. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which cool. beer do you guys like? Coffee kind of noted beers. Or do you like other stuff? I like the uh, I like red ales usually. So like ales or um, like they're actually First Mag is Wakula is my favorite. So yeah, I, uh, yeah, they have a really good blonde ale. Yeah, but cool, cool. And what's your favorite Gator sport? Water polo. Water. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or what's your favorite moment since you've yeah. been in Gainesville as far as athletically? What's like the moment you guys remember? Oh, that's a good question. Oh gosh. Go ahead. Um, I think the, I think I forgot what year the, the national championship year where everybody went out on the streets and just partied really hard in Midtown. Yeah. I 2006. Think that was, yeah. Yeah. That was oh, that a, was awesome. Yeah. Dude, we got on our, actually we got on our bicycles and we rode around Midtown, like giving everyone high fives. So that was pretty awesome. Yeah, that was a pretty cool so, night. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. And then finally, where can uh, everybody find you guys online, social media, handles, that kind of thing? Uh, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, Opus Coffee. Yeah. Perfect. So. And then opuscoffee.com Correct. as well, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep, yep. And you can order online, you can all that good yeah. stuff, and then visit one of the locations in one of the five locations. They're all listed on the website, I assume. They're all listed on the website. And actually, if you don't want to pay for shipping or for the coffee, you can do local pickup at any location, and it'll be there the next day. I think we even have the farmer's market list as location on Wednesdays, and soon we will have our roaster on 4th Avenue listed as a pickup location, too. Yeah. So, um, and then we'll, yeah. se- we'll set up a discount code for Woe Podcast. And Whoa, we're, yeah. we're, we're, yeah. we're, we're, we're going to get 20% off your order. Nice, so nice, W-H-O-A-G-N-V right. podcast will be the code? Yep. Okay. Perfect. We got it. All right. W-H-O-A-G-N-V podcast is the code. Go get your coffee. That's that's awesome. Make sure we like 
order up a lot. <laughs> like, I'm looking at my team saying, like, let's make sure we get our. <laughs> but uh, on, on Tower Road, um, that's then the, it's inside the IT Pro building. Yeah. You can pull right up in the circle. You don't even need to get a parking spot. Just pull right up in the circle super and walk easy. in. Yeah, it's super yeah. easy out there. Those guys so. are super cool, too. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Gainesville Dev Academies over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great location. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. That's you can awesome. get Baker Baker pastries over there, too. So, cool. Very cool. Well, guys, thank you so yeah. much for being yeah, on the show. You. This was like a lot of fun, and uh, you know, much love to you guys. Continu- <laughs> continued, continued success. Keep crushing it, and um, everybody, thank you so much yeah. for listening. This is the WHOA GNV Podcast, the podcast bringing you businesses and individuals that make you go. That I did that last time, and nobody, <laughs> it's now becoming. Nobody a thing. said, "Well, I, I get here early, and I tell them to not say it." Do you? Yeah. I'll do it. Do it over. I'll do it. Do it. There you go. The right. podcast bringing you businesses and individuals that make you go, "Whoa!" <laughs> See ya. Gainesville, Boston.